Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be demoing some Windows games playing on the M1 Max chip. So the fact is, there aren't that many games that you can play on the Mac operating system, so therefore we have to turn to Windows games in order to expand our gaming library. Today I'm going to be focusing on the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, with 32GB of RAM, a 10-core CPU and a 32-core GPU. This laptop has the highest number of CPU cores and GPU cores that you can currently buy in the Apple Silicon lineup. Unfortunately, Boot Camp is not supported on the new M1 Apple Silicon chips, and therefore we have to use a compatibility layer like Crossover in order to translate the Windows API calls into macOS compatible API calls. And this type of translation layer is very taxing on the computer, especially when we're running games that were never designed to or never optimized to be run on the Mac operating system. And furthermore, we can also play games through a virtual machine software like Parallels, which virtualizes the entire Windows 11 ARM operating system and plays games on top of it as well. And Parallels really benefits from having the increased number of CPU cores as well as the increased RAM of the M1 Max chip. If you'd like to find out how to install any of these games, then please follow the link in the description for my video tutorial. This provides a step-by-step -step guide on how to install games on Crossover and Parallels. Both of these pieces of software have a 14 day free trial, please check out the links in the description. If you do make use of this link and make a purchase, you'll be really helping to support the channel and also the work that I do. Please check out the coupon codes as well, which will give you up to a 25% discount. So first up is Star Wars Battlefront 2. So this is a relatively new discovery and is also one of the most requested games that I've had so far. And this is quite interesting because this has not been compatible with Crossover for a really long time, but this has been made compatible with Crossover version 21. I'm currently running this at 1080p at medium settings. And what I'd say is that this game runs extremely well on the M1 Max hardware. What you'll find is that the game will actually stutter quite frequently when you're loading up a new map or a new part of the game, but after a few minutes the shaders will have compiled and this stuttering will disappear completely. What's great is that we're able to achieve around 70 to 95 FPS even in crowded areas with lots of characters on screen at once. So I definitely say that this is one of the most fun and enjoyable multiplayer experiences that you can have on the Mac operating system. And this is despite the fact that the game is running through the crossover compatibility layer, which is slowing everything down a little bit. It doesn't run perfectly as occasionally you'll see some graphical artifacts on other levels. However, I would say that this is a perfectly good casual fun multiplayer experience. So next up is The Witcher 3. So this again is a Windows game running through crossover. So today we're running this game at 1080p with almost all of the settings turned up to high. So in the open world areas, we're getting around 100 FPS, which is quite impressive given that this game was never designed to be run on a Mac. We're also not getting the same stutters that I had when I was running this on the M1 Pro. It's relatively stutter free compared to that. That's because we have a lot more GPU headroom compared to the M1 Pro, which only had 16 GPU cores, whereas the M1 Max has 32 GPU cores. The frame rate also holds up during intense combat scenes, so we're still running here at 100 FPS plus, despite the fact that we're fighting several enemies at once. So the performance is very impressive, and whilst I will never suggest somebody buy an M1 Max just to play a game like The Witcher 3, it's nice to know that it does run quite well. So next up is GTA 5. So I've already covered GTA 5 to death on this channel, so I've done several videos on GTA 5 performance on the M1 Max, M1 Pro, and the original M1 chip. However, the new development that I'm quite excited to tell you about is that GTA 5 now runs online through Crossover. So Crossover now supports the Rockstar Social Club launcher, and we're able to actually run this game through Crossover, which delivers much better performance than trying to run this game through Parallels. So when I last reported on this, Crossover wouldn't allow us to actually join a multiplayer game, but as you can see here, I'm actually playing online on my M1 Max chip with other players in a public online race. Now the performance isn't actually very impressive, it's running at 1080p at the normal settings, and it's only going around 35 to 45 FPS. However, I'm fairly certain that this game is capable of running at 100 frames per second plus, because this is possible in the single player campaign. My theory is that the Rockstar Social Club and Steam DRM are causing performance issues. I'm sure that performance will improve over time as Code Weavers, the developers of Crossover, are still working on the compatibility for this game. So next up is the game Battlefield 1. So this is another new discovery that this game works on Crossover 21, and the performance here is relatively good. So we're running this game at 1080p, and we've got all of the graphics settings turned to low. So even on those settings, this game does look very good. The actual frame rate fluctuates quite a lot between around 45 FPS to 80 FPS. This is really good considering the level of graphical fidelity and really how large the maps are in this game. I also tried playing this game online and the results are less impressive. So you can see that the frame timings are all over the place and we're only getting around 30 FPS. I also experienced some crashes to desktop so I wasn't able to test this extensively. However, I'm sure that performance and stability will improve as this game only very recently started working through crossover. 
So next up is the game Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. So this is the remaster of the classic real-time strategy game, which features new graphics, new civilizations, and a new expansion pack. So once again, I'm running this game through crossover and I'm using 1080p on the ultra setting. So one of the new developments with this game is that we don't have a convoluted set of fixes in order to install it. You can just install the Steam bottle and then you can just play this right off the bat. Furthermore, on the benchmark, we're getting a score of 1,191, which means that we can play games online as well. So next up is the game Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and this is the Dark Souls-like game set in feudal Japan. I'm running this game at 1080p at mostly medium settings. The frame rate hovers around 45 FPS. It's definitely a little bit disappointing considering how other similar games can actually run better and have better graphics. However, this game runs far, far better than it used to run on my M1 MacBook Air, and I consider this a semi-playable frame rate. We're not quite hitting 60 frames per second, but if we lower the resolution and the detail a little bit, we could easily hit a consistent 60 FPS. So next up is Dark Souls 3, which is another From Software game. This game currently has a bug where if you try to access the graphics setting, then the game will slow down completely. So one workaround is to edit the graphics setting file externally, which will allow you to change the graphics settings. I'll leave a link in the description for details on how to do this. So here the game is pretty much running at max settings between 45 to 60 FPS. I'm not really a Dark Souls expert, but I'd be interested in hearing whether you think that this is an acceptable performance rate for this game. So next up is the open world RPG Skyrim, and unfortunately Crossover 21 has introduced a new bug where the textures of the game are shimmering. Now a version of this bug existed before on Crossover 20, however this time it's clearly affecting much more of the game and it's also affecting the game performance too. So normally Crossover offers close to native level performance, however in this case we clearly have some issues. So this time we're going to turn to Parallels in order to play this game. So Parallels is a virtual machine software that allows you to run Windows 11 ARM in parallel to your Mac OS operating system. We're running this game at high settings at 1080p. And here we're going to get much better compatibility, although at a cost of performance. So here we're running the same scene in white run and we're getting about 30 FPS. But this is substantially lower than what we'd expect from crossover, which can easily hit 60 FPS in the same areas. That's because the virtual machine is consuming half of the CPU cores and also half of the RAM of this laptop. And therefore performance is going to be worse than running the same game through crossover. Parallels is also a little bit easier to use if you're a standard Windows user because the Windows 11 environment is a little bit more familiar and you can use the standard mod tools available to all the other Windows users as well. So I do hope that Codeweavers, the developers of crossover, will be able to patch this in the future. I know that Skyrim is a priority for them. While we're waiting for the next patch of crossover to fix this issue, we can play this game all the way through on parallels. So next up is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'm running this game through crossover at 1080p running on the medium setting. And although the frame rate is pretty good running at 60, 70 FPS, I think that most people will agree that the graphical artifacts and the flickering textures are too distracting to be able to play this game all the way through. So here I'm running the game through parallels and the virtual machine is so starved of resources that I've actually had to turn down the game settings so far that the actual in-game menu won't accept this setting. You have to edit this externally. So what I've done is I've turned the resolution down to 540p and I've also turned down all of these settings such as shadow quality, view distance, etc. down to zero, down to the lowest, which the in-game menu won't allow you to do. So up until very recently, this game couldn't actually be launched from the Mac operating system and that's because it used to have a very invasive DRM system called Denuvo and this was recently removed. So now it can be launched through crossover or through parallels. So clearly whilst the game can be played through parallels, I wouldn't say it's an enjoyable experience. So most people are going to be waiting for code weavers to fix the flickering texture issues on crossover before we can actually play this game properly. So next up is Halo Master Chief Collection, which is a remaster of the Halo series of games. So we'll be looking at the first game in the series, which is Halo Combat Evolved. So I'm running this through parallels. This used to run fine through crossover. However, there's a new bug which is preventing people from being able to log into the game. So parallels is the way to play it at the moment. So I'm currently running this game at 1080p with most of the graphics settings set to the default. So Halo Combat Evolved has a cool feature where you can switch between the original graphics and the enhanced graphics. And the performance difference is going to be quite dramatic, especially when we get into firefights. So in this section of the silent cartographer map, we're getting around 35 FPS with the enhanced graphics mode turned on. However, as soon as we turn off the enhanced graphics, we're getting around 100 FPS plus. So which graphics mode you choose is really up to you. The original Halo ran on the Xbox at 30 frames per second. However, we have much higher expectations these days, especially for much older games like this. Or you could just wait for Code Weavers to patch crossover so that you can run this game at much higher frame rates in the future, which will come eventually. 
So next up is Halo Reach, which is also part of the Master Chief Collection. Historically, this game has never worked on crossover before but it has been playable through Parallels. However, when I tested it last on my M1 MacBook Air, we had some bugs related to the speed. The game was running a little bit too fast for some reason. However, this seems to be running pretty much perfectly on the M1 Max chip. I'm running this at 1080p and I've turned the graphics setting down to the lowest. So I definitely describe this game as being very playable. The main issue is that we don't have access to multiplayer at the moment. However, I'll be testing this out in the future. So next up is the open world shooter, Far Cry 3. So I get asked about Far Cry games a lot, so I thought I would include it in this test. So this game runs far better than it did on the M1 MacBook Air. And I think that's because of the increased amount of RAM and also CPU cores that are dedicated to this virtual machine. So I'm basically running this game at medium settings at 1080p. I'm also running in DirectX 9 mode. So the game is running around 40 to 55 FPS when we're out in the open world. It can also climb 60 FPS plus when we're in interior areas too, even when we're in combat. So please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Far Cry 3 is the most modern Far Cry game that you can actually launch on the M1 Mac. If you discover a more modern Far Cry game that does work on the M1 Mac, then please leave a comment and let me know. So next up is Assassin's Creed 4. So I'm running this game through Parallels. So although this game is quite old, I've had to turn it down to 720p and turned off all of these settings down to the lowest. So it's a little bit disappointing that this game doesn't perform particularly well through Parallels. I imagine that this is due to a CPU bottleneck. It actually plays very similarly to when I played this on my M1 MacBook Air, which is a bit disappointing because we've got so many more GPU cores and so much more RAM than my original 8GB machine. So I'm including this game because people always ask about Assassin's Creed games, and I think that this is the most modern addition in the series that can be played on the M1 Mac. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So next up is Control, which is one of the more recent AAA titles that can be launched from the M1 Mac. So I'm running this through Parallels through Windows 11 ARM, and it's actually running pretty well. I'm running this at 1080p with the medium graphics setting. So in this training tutorial section, we're actually getting over 100 frames per second, which is not really indicative of the rest of the game. When combat actually starts happening, the frame rate will drop to around 30 to 40 FPS. So this game runs far better than it used to on my M1 MacBook Air, and I would definitely call this a very playable game. Being able to play this game on the M1 Max chip really demonstrates its power, because not only are we virtualizing the entire Windows 11 ARM operating system, we're also emulating this x86 64-bit game onto the ARM instruction set, and it's a wonder that we're able to play this game at all. So the last game on the list is Tekken 7. So this game also recently had the Denuvo DRM removed from the game very recently. So now can be launched on Crossover and on Parallels. So I'm actually running this through Parallels because Crossover has some major graphical issues that can't run the game properly. I'm running this game at 1080p at medium settings, which automatically sets a rendering scale of 75%. So what I found out about this game is that it's quite hard to get it to run at 60 FPS. Even if we turn down the resolution and the detail, then we're still hovering around this 50 FPS mark. This is also quite dependent on which level is being loaded in the background. So for example, on this water level where there's almost no detail going on in the background, it's actually running at very close to 60 FPS almost all the time. However, when we get to a level like this one with a lot of detail and lighting going on in the background, then the frame rate tanks pretty dramatically. So anyway, this brings us to the end of this M1 Max Windows gaming list. Please let me know in the comments if you think that the M1 Max chip is good for Windows gaming. Like I said before, I wouldn't recommend that anyone buy an M1 Max chip solely for the purpose of gaming, especially Windows gaming, which is rather janky and relies on these compatibility layers and virtual machines in order for it to work. However, it is good to know that if you did have the inclination, you could get some of these Windows games to work using these methods. So if you'd like to find out more about how to get these games running on the crossover or parallels, then please check out the video tutorial, which I'll link to in the description. Please also check out the M1 compatibility games list on the Apple Gaming Wiki website. This lists all of the compatible games which I've tested either running through crossover or parallels or running through Rosetta 2 or native ARM. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.